Welcome back in, everybody. Golf Talk Radio with Mike and Billy. In case you missed the first hour, we had uh, Dr. Beth Brown on the air, LPGA member, also a uh, certified uh, mental performance consultant coach. and uh, a PhD in sports psychology. Sports psychology from the University of Kansas. You can catch all of our shows on our podcast page. Visit golftalkradio.com. We have all the links there, so you can listen to it through, you know, uh, Apple Podcasts and through your um, Samsung, Samsung phones and Google Play and all that stuff. So check out GolfTalkRadio.com. It's there. You can tune in to what you missed, And uh, but we're here live right now. Spreaker, am I right? Spreaker, Stitcher. I got it right. Yeah. Tune Speckles. iTunes, Tune Radio, something like that. There's a whole hey, bunch. I, I just, Radio. I happened to open my quote book, and, to, and you and Hop brought up the putt. You know, the, how do you make those putts if it's a lot of money? And, and Tom Watson, to be champion, you have to find the way to get the ball in the cup on the last day. Yeah. And he doesn't say how, but you have to. <laughs> but you have to. To be a champion, you got to find a way to do that under all that all the gun. And to them, in fairness to yes, about the million dollars, to us it's life-changing. They're all, everybody was in that, th- those 30 people. They're all multimillionaires. Every single one of them are multimillionaires. So it really so, is kind of, So yeah. when I mentioned I played for $200, Nassau was the most personally I've ever played for. Right. Um, I didn't have a lot of money then. I had enough to cover the bet, but I didn't have a lot. Yeah. Um, so nowadays, that wouldn't seem so lot. You know, I, I'm doing yeah. a little better. But when those guys, you know, Rory's worth up $200 million, um, or something, $15 million is a lot. It's life-changing. I mean, that's huge, right? Right. But it's, they're just playing golf. And I think that's how they kind of do it. Because, you know, Kepka player a year, two years in a row, he makes that putt for the million dollars. Right. It's, uh, he's a zil- he's going to be a zillionaire too. I mean, it's right. all the stuff. So I think it's relative, but I, I'm sure it's near. Yeah, near, it, it, yeah, I agree. I mean, the, 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 the most I ever played for is probably 50 to 75 bucks. But like when I mentioned the, the, the PGA, trying to get to the PGA, they've changed it since. You had to plat- pass your player ability yeah. test first before you could get into the program to become a PGA club pro. So I played at the uh, Santa Clara Golf and Tennis Club, which is where the 49ers Levi Stadium is. I was with you when you did pass. And Yeah, and that was the next one. So that was the, the third one, which... Which was cool. The third one, which was the one that I'm talking about, we got to the 36th hole, and Tom Stankowski was my caddy for me, and he goes, uh, it's a par five dog leg right, and you could cut it over the 10th hole, but it was out of bounds. And he goes... He just told me, he goes, you need to make an eagle. And I said, I said, I need to make an eagle? And he goes, oh, you need to make an eagle to make it. And and so the two guys I were, was, were playing with, turned out they were brothers, and they had been scoring for each other. So I get up on the tee, and I hear one of the guys go, I'm on the bubble. And the I other guy with, goes, I'm going to I'm gonna make it or something like that. And On a bubble. I was with you. It was, what, that was it was you? I yeah. thought it was Stan Cowley. On a bubble. And that was I'm pretty and, sure it was Stan Cowley. So score, maybe I crossed we, we it. We kept but, score with somebody that did, wasn't making yeah. it and they made it. They scored for you. But I had to make Eagle and I hit driver over the corner and I vividly remember I made it over the corner. I had a nine iron in from like one forty two and it was a dog leg kind of it was a green that was like an upside down L kind of tilted to the left. And I hit it over the pin, and it went to the very top of the green. So I had a 40-foot putt downhill. It was a must-make. That I had to make for Eagle to, to get my to get into the PGA program. You know, and you're grinding your butt uh-huh. off. I mean, you're out there from, whatever, 7 in the morning, and this is at like 6 at night. Right. And I'm exhausted. Holes, right? And I'm pissed because the guys yeah. I'm playing with are not playing by the rules of golf. Yeah. I, you know, I wasn't with you that day, but I was with you the bubble day. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, the... I hit the putt and I left it like I don't know four inches short of the hole, you know. And it and it was you know it wasn't like a money, but subject. it was like at that point you're just like okay, you know, do do I knock it in the hole or do I just knock the ball off the green? And they had a rule in place by that point. The PGA did that if you didn't finish the 36 holes, you they weren't. actually you couldn't sign up for a PAT for another six months. Oh, okay. Because they didn't want people signing up and, and stopping, stopping, right? Because they did. They had a bad front nine. Yeah. And well, you know, it's, it's, it was it was. I was with you when you finally did. It was very cool. And because and I don't know if Hop realizes this, but to become a member, you have to pass your playing playing ability test, which means you basically play thirty six holes, and depending on the difficulty of the course, you have to shoot a pair of seventy fives right. or less. 
So you have to make one. Usually it's 148, 150, you know, is the target number or whatever. Yeah, like 156, 155, 55, it's really hard. Yeah. So if you're shooting a pair of 75s, you're almost guaranteed in unless you're playing an easier course. But, you know, I think the day you did it, you went like 80, 71 or something. I mean, you Yeah, came, it was like 80, 70. You, it was something you weird. You came really back yeah. and kicked it back. Yeah. And so it was fun because, that, like you said, that first, that first round we're thinking, oh, no, this is going to be tough. And then you had to finish so you can do it again. And you just came out and played lights out. You focused and you did it. So it was. It's fun to see it because it is your life. You know, you wouldn't it be was. the PGA pro that you are now. And there's, yeah. you know how many PGA pros they're not because of the playing yeah. test. Yeah. There's some good business people. Lot. They could be great customer service. They could be good salesmen. They could have passion, but they make them have. So at least yeah. you want to be an expert in the game. And you're not. You don't have to be scratched, but you got to no. be pretty close to it because you have to do it. Oh, and you have to do it under those conditions. Yeah. Is you know you could yeah. be a scratch player, but you put yourself in the in the condition of, of that situation. So every putt's a lot of like the pressure putt. Yeah. You know. So two weeks like ago, Q school. It's yeah. a Q school. For two three weeks ago, and I texted you this, but I I played oh, with yeah. Chase Watts, who's our new assistant professional at Paso, and we played at seven in the morning. So we got done playing and. It's like, man, I played okay. I played pretty decent, right? So I go home, start doing some work, and then Nikki and a couple other of her friends or whatever are like, hey, we're going to go play Cypress Ridge. Do you want to play? And I thought, oh, man, I haven't done 36 holes forever. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go do it. And, and you're 50 now. That's and then on my way down, I thought, you. this is like a PAT. I'm going to make this like a PAT. I want to see how I do. So I went, went out and played. I played pretty dang good, and then I got to the – 16th hole of the second round, and man, I hit a wall. I mean, mentally, physically hit a wall. You're talking about your 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 34th hole? Oh, yeah. It was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? What am I doing? And then, but I made it through, and I shot 76, 75. I know, man. You played so great. I, so I was ecstatic, and then three days later, my back spasm. I saw you. <laughs> Well, of course, <laughs> I, was like, I, can't, it, it, I can't keep You know, through. it would kill me that. now. Yeah, I'm, I couldn't I'm, do that again, I don't but, think. Because of my yeah. broken body, but I was impressed when you sent me that man. That's good scoring. You played great, <laughs> and, and you know what? And that's why I'm proud of you. That's man. why I wanted to play because I felt so good when I played in the morning. I thought, "Well, oh, golf is oh. fun." I have a similar this, this is fun. <laughs> similar story. And you and I had a great conversation, <laughs> probably two or three days earlier, pertaining to my golf. Yeah, swing. we did, and, it, it, and it, it helped. All right, very cool. A ton. Well, yeah. I went down to the Dallas Hall Ranch course, which is the private course down there in, in Buellton. Yeah, and the Gary's a friend of mine that works at the at the in the golf shop at Black Lake, and just doesn't get enough credit. You know, he's just a golf shop guy and he deals with people, right? Yeah, which so, is fun. and he's always supportive of the junior golf and stuff we put through there. So I said, you know, what? just him and me, let's go. I'm gonna take you out. We'll go play some golf and we'll nice. and we'll go to lunch just to thank him. So um, they're very kind to us at the ranch course. It's private. Reminds me of New England. We I've still never played there. You're kidding. Never been oh, there. Oh, I didn't know. It's, it reminds me of New England. I played all of all the tree, river course. Yeah, it's I've so never, different. Played, never played the ranch. It's it's tree lined. It's it's just beautiful. It looks if you open your eyes and didn't know where you were, you might think you were in New England, some of those holes, which it brings back memories. That's to me. cool. But I was even part of the front nine and moving along pretty good. I mean, you know, I'm I am i am playing the white tees. I'm not yeah. playing back like where we used to play. Exactly. Yeah. But um but I'm even par. I'm feeling pretty good. Um tenth or eleventh hole, a little slippage in the, on the grass, there goes the knee. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I'm li- I'm limping around. I'm trying to do the best I can. Um, I I was four over for the day, so I I finished four over That's on the still, back nine. But um, re- but I did still finish respectable man. Par 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 because I, I for after like eleven, twelve, thirteen, I yeah. was it was hurting and throbbing and you know and I knew if I twisted it was gonna hurt more, so I'm staying back there you yeah. know, on that leg and just kind of going yeah. crisscross yeah. around. Went I went dub bogey bogey in three holes, but then I finished last three pars, and I just cause just. You know, fought through it. <laughs> That's what you got. It. That's literally <laughs> but, what you got. But uh, do. so mine was only eighteen holes, and I hit the wall. You know, on, on third twelve, I hit the wall on, thir- on twelve. Actually, because we, you know, oh, you haven't played there, but we skipped ten because they were starting another group there. So we came back and finished on yeah. ten. So it was eleven twelve hole when I when I kind of twisted the knee. But it was it just it made me chuckle a little bit. Going, this is who I am now. You know, I've got to yeah. really be careful. But it was it was just swinging, twisting on the grass. You know, yeah. but. I hit wall at twelve holes. You hit walls at thirty four holes. <laughs> well, and I had I had so for, ups good and for you, man. Downs, and then now I've gotten to the point where I've just I'm like I'm just playing and I'm just I'm just accepting what comes. But like what Beth was talking about is something I've been working on really hard with my golf Pro- focus game on process when thing. I play. Yeah. That's so. Last night I went out on my own, played five holes, and that's what I focused on because Monday I'm playing a match play. 
you know that I, I don't know if you, you know me pretty well. Yeah. You know, I've always done that. I focus on the yeah. process. I like that. I've never yeah. really looked at outcome. Right. If it's match play, you kind of do because you need right. to know your strategies. Right. So you're planning a, a future instead of, you know, not one shot at a time, but maybe four shots at a right. time. But otherwise, it's just the process when, you know, so I've always let the outcome fall into place. Yeah. Which is a great thing. And so we did, we, we started a match play at Pass Rolls Golf Club. We got 32 guys. So I had my first What's, match on Monday morning. Is it a handi- 7 handicap thing? Yeah. Do you have to give how many? I think the gentleman I'm playing, I might have to give him four or five or six. The match play rocks. Yeah. I love match I haven't match done play. it in a long time. I do too. I haven't done it in a long time. That's, but I remember we used to do it at Avila all the, the time. It's the best. I love match play. And this is all nets, double, four li- ball, two against double two. elimination. Yeah. Good for so, you, man. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it, man. It's uh, stepping kind of back into what we used to do. And like we've talked about a gazillion times, you get in the business and you kind of get caught up in in the business you know it's just easy to get caught up in the business which brings me to this point yes you've been working very hard for your career and you're turned 50 and i've been working really hard and i'm about to turn 60 um we've been saving money and working hard this 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 show makes us so much money we don't even know what to do with it and uh, which is why we do reruns which is why yes because we're out (laughs) you guys are just printing money we're we're out on our printing money we're out on our boats uh, Uh, oh yeah Running uh, so so we yeah. th- we were talking we we're sitting down in our business My meeting. My blow up pool we had, in the backyard. <laughs> we had the board there. Hop couldn't make it that day, but we had our board there and our staff. And we're talking about we looked at financials and we're like, so let's just what do we do with this money? And then we realized, my God, it's the same as what we do with our golf games and what we preach. So we've got six tips here that if you if you you know if you're golfers um, and you want to get to you know invest your money and get get going because we care about your financial well being as much as we care about your 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 process and you becoming uh, reaching your goals in golf. So, um, I want me to start this thing off and yeah. we just alternate. Yeah. Obviously, you need to follow r- routine, just like you do in golf. When you watch golf, you notice every single player goes through a routine before making a shot. This routine is is critical uh, to sustain performance. Obviously, we're just talking about that. It, it's a process. Uh, invest your money also creates a routine that that drives action. The routine should be include specific steps such as defining your overall financial strategies, measuring risk tolerances, w- risk reward, like we talked about on the golf course, knowing your time horizon and aggressively saving. So you've got to have some kind of a specific goal out there. By this date, I'm going to do this. Like you, you know, you're working. You, you said 36. I'm going to make it like a PAT and try to shoot 154, and you and you beat that. So good for you, my man. Um, Thank you, man. And so you got to, you know, you got to find the different moves that you can make, put you on autopilot. So you can, so if your routine is enough, you can go on autopilot and, uh, and, and just start making money without having, cause it's your routine. You stick with it. If you're all over the place and you don't have a routine, it's going to be dangerous. So follow routine, not only in golf, but in your finances. What do you got, man? It's scaring me. Don't you have a routine? Well, yeah, we're talking about that. We have our people I working do, on that now routine. I'm like, man, maybe I need to rethink <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, just remember in investing in golf, your swing is your own personal par. Yeah. So each, each professional golfer has their, you know, un- unique swing that works best for them. Many amateur golfers, as you and I see, often try to emulate those professional golfers. All the time. And it's just where they're at and where the amateur are at is at at the time is usually just two completely different things. So resist, resist the temptation to make a sweeping change in your own per- portfolio when, for instance, like a friend brags like, hey, I uh, just bought, uh, gotta, I bought 20, uh, 2,000 shares of uh, IBM <laughs> uh, and I'm going to invest here and, and switch it over to AT&T. You, you got to get them up. You got to yeah. get this. You got to change your portfolio. So you want to not follow Just because Warren Buffett says so that lead. doesn't necessarily yes. make it right. Plus, like you said, for the good. golfers, Warren Buffett's got a heck of a lot of money. <laughs> yes, he so does. if he does lose, so he, you know, a million in a day, <laughs> not going to hurt him. Yeah, so, so instead, stick to the financial strategy that you created for your own situation so you'll find investment success. And both in uh, golf and investing, persistence and consistency will reward you for sure. That's great advice, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, um, definitely. Golf comes back to fundamentals. It really always has. Um, every golf uh, pro golfer can strip down each shot to the fundamentals, the grip, the stance, alignment, um, and balance, and, and uh, you know things like that. If the shot starts to go offline, many times it probably be attributed to one of those fundamentals being off. 
So this first thing you check, <clears throat> your alignment, you're checking your things just to go back because a little bit off in your fundamentals can make you know a yeah. tougher day on the golf course. Huge. Same goes with your money. If you find that you're off track with financial goals, the, often the issue is a small tweak in the financial situation. Is spending uh, spending out stripping saving? Right? Are you just overspending? You're not. You're not. You know. You're, are you spending carelessly? Does your asset allocation need to be adjusted so you can make more or less risk? I mean, do you need to look at your portfolio? I mean, you've got to stick to fundamentals. Are you taking too many? Are you going for that par five when you really should be laying up and you have a solid chance of, of, of a good investment? Are you going to? You know what I'm saying? Once you identify the problem, you can yep. make the necessary adjustments and you can get right back on course. So you got to stick to the fundamentals. Don't get crazy out there. Not with your money. I love it. Be in the zone. AutoZone. <laughs> I, I heard the tune in my head, man. <laughs> when a golfer is playing well, they don't hear the noise of the crowd. They call that being in the zone. In the zone. Right? Investors also need to tune out the noise, which can include market swings, following financial news anxiously, and chasing stock tips. Focus on the substance and not the noise. It's very good advice. Man. It happens in golf all the time. The guy gets up on the tee, hits the drive. Oh, I killed that thing, man. I'm so glad I pulled out my driver. And it's on a hole that you don't yeah, normally yeah. use driver on. But you're like, you know what? I think I can do that. Now, Nicholas once said that. I, think, I want to say Muirfield Golf Course in, in Scotland. I might I want to say Muirfield might be, but it's the one the train goes right by. It's always there. It's one of the open courses. And they asked Jack, uh, you know, how do you play so well when the trains are going by? And he says, what trains? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know exactly. they were. So um, That's awesome. seeking good advice, just like you'd find a good instructor. Like I seek Mike when I need some help. And, and you know, even with all success, top golfers, use they have same swing coaches. Um, and they stick with them if they're, you know, if they're, if they're working out. Um, investors, you've got to find somebody on top of the game that can want to be reliable. So, which means find a good financial advisor. You really need to find somebody you can trust and, and that they trust you, um, who you believe in, and vice versa. So you got to you seek advice and do some research. Who's best for you? And then be a partner because it is. Mm, so like that's that. like all, all good coaches are partners with their players. So that, that's why well, I'm just. Could that coach. also be choosing the people you play with? Absolutely, of course. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know. Not so much you get to take their money or not. You can, you know. No, but I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. like people that you actually seek advice, wanna... man. I love the seeking advice. You got to seek advice, um, uh, you know, because you know we're talking our financial advisors. We fired that other guy. You know, we looked down at the bottom line the other day. I don't know what his name, Irving. Who was that guy? Who, 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 Irving Crabmeyer. Was that what? Yeah, Crab Crabmeyer. Crab Crabmeyer. Crabmeyer. Well, I don't know why he was with us for a long time, but you did. You handle it professionally. And uh, so now we're, we're we're seeking someone else to handle our giant portfolio and and hop uh, if you know anybody we will we'll listen in the next board meeting all right yeah man all I'm, right. I'm there I'll bring the snacks <laughs> <laughs> what's he gonna bring in our when we sleep in the uh, hotel room oh juice boxes uh, you're bringing the fruit I'll, snacks I'll, uh, juice <laughs> boxes and and the fruit rolls you and, got the fruit that's snacks awesome I'll bring the towels so see good in ooh big towels <laughs> big beach towels I like little bitty towels hey I got Boy, one I got one more. <laughs> Remember that bad shots do happen. Of course they right? do. So experienced golfers know that they will hit a certain number of bad shots per round. It's just going to happen. It's the game of golf. Well, they should at least know and, ex and anticipate. Yeah. So the, right? goal, the goal shouldn't be a, to avoid making any bad shots, but you know, develop and maintain an emotional equilibrium that will focus on the next shot and the one after that so that you ultimately will stay on track. Similarly, investors working towards a financial goal can't and shouldn't expect a constant upward trend. Market vol volatility and down cycles are bound to happen. It's not going to be smooth all the time. The key is not to make a rash decision that upends all of your progress. Yep. So like you hit one bad shot or you hit a bad putt, you get to the next tee and you're just totally mad. You don't need a market crash. No. Right? Sell everything. And you're like, you know, it's that 310-yard <laughs> par four with trees on either side, some homes, 310 yards. Oh, I got driver. Six I Six iron, this. baby. I have one of well, two I'm words. just going to pummel Six this. iron. I'm so mad I missed that putt. <laughs> Those are like my two words. Yeah. Two Six iron, baby. Two six irons. Six iron wedge. I love that. So that's great financial golf advice right there. Yeah, so that's that's, that's what it says on my checks now. That's Billy <laughs> gives DBA six iron. <laughs> play, six play it safe with your money i love it <laughs> so we'll take a break guys first break of the second hour golf talk radio brought to you by sundale country club uh home of the bakersfield city championship for over 30 years check them out online sundalecountryclub.com 
or call them for tea times. 661-831-5224. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Fast